We have done a few videos rebuking pagan holidays and mixing them with the Father's feast days and traditions of men, and how we should not even be celebrating his birth in winter, and how really there's no indication in Scripture that we should be celebrating his birth in the first place. For this video, we will show that the Good Friday and Easter time frames for his death and resurrection just does not match up to Scripture. We are not going to cover the pagan side of Easter and Good Friday. Instead, we are going to examine the sign of Jonah to glean the sign that Yahushua spoke of. This must be one of the biggest overlooked signs that everyone knows about but fails to see the true understanding and meaning behind it. As I have studied this subject, I keep running into article after article of mainstream teachings that continuously omit the nights in three days and three nights that Yahushua spoke of in Matthew 12, 39 and 40. I find it amazing how easily evidence and details are thrown out and discarded when they don't fit the mainstream belief system. It is perplexing that this is the only sign given to an evil and adulterous generation and they still don't get it right. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. As we will show you today, the mainstream concept of the death and resurrection of Yahushua is three days and two nights. This is because they all have Yahushua dying on year 33 AD. You know, that most famous organization that loves the number 33? Oh, how the wicked one works his lies and he is truly the father of all liars. What I have seen in articles and I have read about this subject has been appalling. They just completely disregard the nights, saying, don't worry about the details, or don't get hung up on the details of the nights. That the days were all inclusive. I'm sorry, that is not okay. Most know the story of Jonah and how he was in the belly of a whale for three days and three nights. This was a famous story told to children as we grew up. Jonah 1.17 now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. When I first started my walk with the Father, I had one of those questions stuck in my head that I always wondered about when I was with the Christian church, Good Friday and Easter, the death and resurrection of our Messiah. Something just never felt right about that time of the year. Now, obviously, during my studies, it was not hard to see the pagan side of the whole Easter thing, the fertility rabbit, the Easter eggs, and Ishtar. All of this has nothing to do with our Messiah and is a mixing of the celebrations, one that many times the Father instructed us not to do. The Father in heaven works in such wondrous ways. This all came about due to someone I know who tried to tell me that I'm celebrating Shabbat on a pagan day and that I needed to worship Shabbat according to the lunisolar cycle with Sabbaths based on the new moon. What's amazing about that argument is that are not all days of the week considered pagan named after a pagan god? So that any day that the Sabbath fell on would be a pagan day if you are pagan? Not to mention there will be times throughout the year where the Sabbath he wants to follow falls on a Saturday. The days are the days. If you are pagan, you call them pagan days. If you're following Elohim, then they will be days one through seven. He was so adamant about following the Sabbaths according to the new moon cycle that he was willing to ignore what Yahushua said about the sign of Jonah and several other verses from each of the four books of the New Testament that, with a little math, can prove that the lunisolar Sabbath calendar puts his death and resurrection in the same time structure of Easter, Passover, and the first day of the week. While the path this person has chosen was not desirable and unfortunate, it did allow the Father to remind me how the sign of Jonah can be used to help test calendars and prove the Sabbath 
and this is one of those moments. I do know many others that believe in the same calendar, as this person does, and I pray that they will really look at the information seriously. Just as I have looked at their calendar and the corruption that has happened and considered what they say, I pray to the Father in heaven that those with ears to hear will hear. It is well known that Yeshua was put to death on the day of Passover, which according to the lunisolar Sabbath calendar, this is the 14th, and according to the lunisolar Hebrew calendar, it is Nisan 14. The Sabbath would be the 15th and the 16th would be the first day of the week. This is also the case with Good Friday, which is always on Friday, Sabbath, always on Saturday, and then Sunday, the first day of the week. Now, in order to calculate the number of days and nights there are in these days, we need to understand what is a day and what is a night. Let's look at this according to the creation account. And Elohim said, Let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw that the light was good. And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So right here we have a foundation to count day and night. If there is light, then there is day. If there is darkness, then there is night. Let's count. And for this count, I will use the Hebrew month name and dates, but you can apply this to the Gregorian calendar or the lunisolar Sabbath calendars as well. The time frame is the same as they both have a single Sabbath in between his death and resurrection. This is the traditional Easter mainstream belief. Nisan 14, Passover. This is the day Yeshua gives up the ghost. To give a benefit of the doubt, we will count this as day one, even though he may have only been in the tomb for a very small part of that day. So that would be day one with zero nights. The night of Nisan 14 would be night one. One day, one night. Sabbath day, the 15th, day two. Two days and one night. Sabbath night of the 15th, two nights. Two days, two nights. And the 16th, the first day of the week. And he rose very early in this day, possibly before sunrise. But we will count it as day three. Three days, two nights. According to the math, he is risen and does not fulfill the sign of Jonah. What gives? We are missing a whole night. According to scripture, he rises on the third day. Yet in most of the scripture, they arrive at the grave very early in the morning and he is already risen. There are two things that must be understood in order to see how the sign of Jonah was fulfilled. One must first understand the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread and its special Sabbaths. The second is to understand how special this third day is. I hope that after you see what we have to show you, that it will become clear as to why this third day is so important. In order to understand this, we need to go back in time to the days of Abraham, where we see a parallel to the Father in heaven showing that he will offer up his son by commanding Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. What is very interesting about this event is the time frame that it happens, and we see this in Genesis 22. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went out to the place in which Elohim had told him. Then, on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Now we all know that Elohim provided Abraham a ram to sacrifice instead of Isaac, his son, thus providing a prophetic look into the future of what would happen to Yehoshua. Now what did Esther do before she approached the king which was against the law if not called by the king. Esther 4.16 Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. 
I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. And as we all know, when Esther went before the king, he lifted the scepter and spared her life. Now, one of the greatest manifestations of Yah's presence in the entire Old Testament was when Elohim descended on Mount Sinai. This was a pivotal event as Elohim delivered his law to those whom he had redeemed. It was something those who witnessed it would have never forgot. Elohim announces this event's time frame in Exodus 19 when the people have finally arrived at Mount Sinai. He tells Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day Yah will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And this is exactly what happened. So we can see how the third day was and is a very important prophetic glimpse into what would happen in the future with Yahushua. Are we waiting for a third day now? Let's look at the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And Yah spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house and their fathers a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein thou shalt eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until morning, and that which remaineth of it until morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat, your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. This is Yah's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beast, and against all of the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am Yah. Our Messiah, as we know, dies on the evening of the 14th, as our perfect Passover lamb dies spotless and blameless. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread also starts on the evening of Nisan 14, Exodus 12, 15 through 18. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day, there shall be an holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No matter of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day I have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Now what many may not understand is that when there was a Sabbath for the feasts, 
The Jews called these days high days or set apart Sabbaths. These Sabbaths were different from the traditional seven day weekly Sabbaths. They were to be different. And we see this in John's writings. Now, there is a huge clue in this next verse, one that shows that the women had bought something while Yahushua was in the tomb. And if this was the case, then they would have been breaking the Sabbath. Mark 16, 1 and 2. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. So are you going to tell me that they were able to buy these things before the sun comes up? The Sabbath was passed, and they went and bought, yet they came to the grave very early in the morning on the first day, as the sun was rising. Now I'm pretty sure there were no 24-hour convenience stores back then. So how could this have been? Well, let's look at the account from Luke, and maybe this will help put it all together. Luke 23 52 through 56. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Yahushua, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulchre that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulchre and now his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So then here we see them prepare spices after the Sabbath, yet rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. The only way for this to happen was for there to be a normal day between two Sabbaths to allow for the women to buy and prepare spices. In the previous time frames, this is completely impossible, as from the time of Messiah died, it was a Sabbath day until he was risen. There would have been zero time for the women to make any kind of purchase and prepare the spices. Yet this is what we see when we put this all together. They were able to make a purchase, prepare the spices, rest on the Sabbath day according to the commandment. This is the reality of the sign of Jonah. So then, let's count the days and nights according to the lunisolar Hebrew calendar with having two Sabbaths in the same week. He dies on Passover, the 14th of Nisan. He is in the tomb all of Passover night, night one, zero days, one night. He is in the tomb all day of the 15th, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, also considered a high day, day one, one day, one night. He is in the tomb all of the night of the 15th, night two, one day, two nights. He is in the tomb all of the day of the 16th, two days, two nights. He is in the tomb all of the night of the 16th, night three, two days, three nights. He is in the tomb on Shabbat day, day three, but he also raises on the third day. So at some point during this day, he is risen, three days and three nights, thus fulfilling the sign of Jonah. Luke 24, one through three. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of Yahushua. John 20 verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. The sun is coming up, and it is yet dark, and he is already risen. The only way Yahushua 
could have been in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights was for there to be two Sabbaths that week. And there is only one day of the year that fits this account in history anywhere close to when Yehoshua was among us. And that day is Nisan 14 of the year 30 AD according to the Hebrew lunisolar calendar. Passover was on Wednesday, Nisan 14. The High Sabbath was on Nisan 15, a Thursday. Nisan 16 was Friday, and this would have been a day that the women would have bought and prepared sweet spices mentioned in Mark and Luke. Then we have a regular Sabbath on Shabbat, Nisan 17. We also have found and linked within the description an online calendar converter that allows us to see the exact dates and days according to the Hebrew and Gregorian calendars that back up what the scriptures show us here. And if you look up all the years around this time frame, it does not fit the sign of Jonah in any way. There is another part of the sign of Jonah that is also very interesting but not mentioned by Yehoshua, but it is worth mentioning here. It is well documented in human history that Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, 40 years after the death and resurrection of our Messiah. What was supposed to happen to Nineveh in 40 days if they did not repent? Jonah 3, 4 And Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Taking all of this a step further, 2030 will be the 2,000th year since the death and resurrection of our Messiah. And them that understand Elohim's time frame knows that a thousand years to us is a day to our Elohim. We also know from Revelation that there will be a millennial reign and a great day of Yah. We are at the end of day two and day three is upon us. And we now know how important the third day is regarding salvation and deliverance. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel and with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Proverbs 21.16 The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The clock is ticking. Make sure you have the extra oil you need to keep your lamp lit. Amen.